hello again. That's uh, back to my RP0 America playthrough. Uh, so last time um, in the last video, I voided the warranty on the camera by getting it wet uh, in the, the nice water uh, brought to us by Scatterer, and so it crashed, and that's okay. So now I'm back at the campus. I've got my sciences done. Probably want to pick up another easy sounding rocket low at 60, easy peasy. Still not going to get a satellite, still not wanting to fly planes. All right, so notice we've got 12.6 uh, science. We did get a little bit of science over the water there. Uh, so I can start unlocking orbital rocketry. So it's 10 times as expensive as this. They really probably would like me to, to get this, but I don't want it. Don't want to build an X plane. Don't want to build any planes right now. Um, those are some nice technologies as well. And Explorer 1 Probe, probably one of the you know, first and easiest things to put right into orbit. Some tasty science hardware, control hardware, etc. Um, uh, I'm still really thinking of getting this tech, though. It'll, I, you know, both, of, uh, both of them will probably let me make uh, better sounding rockets, because this will be you know, a nice core that I can shoot up into space. I can get some more science. Um, by making sounding rockets. I'm kind of convincing myself to get early avionics before this, actually. But I really I really want both of them. Um, I might be able to put something in orbit with just this. I don't know. I think avionics and control are going to be my biggest problem in that case. Yeah, probably. Uh, so th this would let me build um, some more powerful rockets, but I, just, I do need to be able to control those rockets. So... This guidance unit early, I think, is going to be necessary. So fine, I've convinced myself to to get this tech. But hopefully soon I'll be able to get that. The reason I really went with this is because it's got science parts in it. Science parts mean I can get more science. Uh, in here, I am not seeing free, you know, nice, easy science parts that I can buy. So there we go. That's why I'm going that way. So that's just debris from my previous launch. Let's get ready, you. Did I get offered any new contracts? No. Sometimes after you open up a new tech, some Techs or um, yeah, after you open up a new tech, some co um, contracts are conditional on you having a technology, and so that is a thing. So here we can see tech two sixty. After I warp a day, I might I might see that actually I may as well um, well one k warp anyway since I do want I need to put this onto the pad so I can launch. There's no debate there. Oh, it's not even built. All right then. So let's just warp till next day, and then see if there's any new contracts, and then finish this out because there probably aren't any, but. Come on, day, go faster. There we go. All right, so any new contracts? No, fair enough, but that can happen. Uh, so warp to complete, warp to complete. Um, and before I did that, I probably should have looked um, at my upgrade points because this is gonna take, so 230 some days, the better part of a year to unlock the next tech. So I'm going to, since I'm happy with rockets to take 30 days to put together, no big deal. Uh, I'll, I'm putting uh, my R&D point into here. Eh, two points, why not? Because the more complex rockets I built, there we go, so you can see from before till now, it's going to be faster to unlock those early avionics. I might still unlock them within this year, who knows? So time to roll out, looks like, um, yeah, it's still sun, oh, near sunset. Mm, that's okay, I'm fine with that. So let's roll out our first, oh, and it's gonna take seven hours to roll out anyway, so now it's night, all right. So let's wait till day, now I do like to do dawn launches, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with now. That's that's a nice time. Let's launch now. All right. Uh, so I did pass the Carmen line previously. Uh, this rocket will give me control, so I could really do a lot of things with this. It's not just where I'm doing basically all my planning and everything in the VAB, like when I want to pitch a little bit. You know, previously I would just choose that in the VAB. I would just say oh, let's just pitch over a little bit. Why not? Uh, but here, that's totally going to be under my control uh, because this actually has avionics. And so I also have to be quick because their early avionics would each t eat tons of power and eat it very quickly. Uh, will this actually... No, it's not going to estimate for me. If I had a battery type program, it would. But look, it's using three units of charge every second. So I'm going to... Temperature scan from launch pad, blah de blah de blah No, nope. all right. So let's spool up the engine, hit space up to thrust, let's go. All right, and let's follow the surface prograde. Um, can I do that with the uh, stock tool? So notice uh, I'm using stock SAS here, but you know it doesn't give me the ability to say, um, do a little more pitching. I'm just gonna keep an eye on the sun. As you can see, that's how dark it really should be. 
I like to play it that way, but you know, for YouTube, I'm willing to brighten it up a little bit. So let's follow the Surface Pro grade. And actually, it kind of wobbles around here a bit. Whoa, with the with the MechJebs PID. So PID is is a control computer that decides how, um, you know how quickly and what how. Uh, how quickly it should re uh, respond to changes in the situation and like with steering right so how so here you can see it kind of wobbling around a little bit like this and here it's doing it way more so you know in certain situations the stock PID you know flight computer brain is smarter and in other situations you'll find that the MechJeb one is smarter also in this case the stock one is a little better now I'm being a bit bold in trying to aim off of the surface vector and that's because you know I'm hitting a pretty high altitude here so I wanted to get a bit more downrange distance since altitude isn't the most important now isn't that pretty now see if I do this you get to see that's the actual sunlight incident on the rocket and I think that looks nicer um, if you completely agree or completely disagree you should probably comment because uh, just because of what how I imagine other people think this is how I will tend to play it, where I show, uh, where I make it a bit more bright. Don't need to make it super bright, but I figure this looks better on YouTube than this. So, getting lots and lots of range, I'm going to pass the Carmen line handily, and if you know there was somebody I wanted to bomb, I could totally have done that. Um, then there we go. See, we passed the Carmen line. That's when uh, we phase out into this space view. So you can see the haze of the atmosphere brought on by the sunlight for you know the first time. I think it's, it's my first uh, uh, launch at this time of day. No new science there. So yeah, only one little tidbit of science, two science units from the little couple instruments I did on here. And this is actually how many V2s that were captured were used. They were used as sounding rockets. They were, you know, rather than having a like a one ton warhead, um, just, just a chemical payload that the Germans had used on it, instead you know, Americans and Russians put science equipment on it of all kinds and then would you know, fire it off as high as they could or with an arc, however they wanted to fire it to do the science. And so I think that's probably, oh, temperature scan from space. Um, hmm, actually, I think we're a little lower than we should be for space. I might have to double check because we adjusted, if you notice, look at all the numbers here. Uh, maybe, maybe I messed something up. Maybe I haven't updated my RSS properly. Um, the altitude, the atmosphere should end at 150 though. I'll have to double check my RSS files because maybe this is an old version of RSS I have in this install. I might, I'll also have to look back at the, no, I think that's the first time I hit this altitude, so my previous videos won't show that. So I'll keep an eye on the numbers as I go down. But if the atmosphere seems to go away at 150, I know I've got the new RSS, you know, new nice RSS configs that have been improved by Kill Ashley. And if not, then I have failed. So this was with a pretty good trajectory arc I got to this altitude. So if I fired the V2 straight up, I could probably get even more altitude than that. So that's that's neat. I'm not going to get 400, though. So I don't think I can take that medium sounding rocket contract unless I put some kind of payload on top. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't feel like I want to make a video for every single launch I do, particularly with some of these boring sound, uh, you know, with feel of me to be fairly boring sounding rocket type launches. Uh, you know, let me know what you think. Um, because I just don't, uh, you know, don't want to put so much time into, uh, you know, I, I like to be able to save a little bit of time and do some things off screen, like building or designing of something, and I don't, you know, I'm not going to learn editing and whatnot to time lapse it, do it silently, whatever. Um, just whenever I do something kind of new or unique or novel, which you know, many many things uh, will be like that, this early on in the career. Um, will I be making a new video of it? And there we go. We're back under the Carmen line. Is there any new science we can get before our V2 explodes? Doesn't look like it. So the next thing we do with this, I think, is going to be um, off screen. I'll do a little bit of design, and then I'll go over it where I design an up, kind of a an upper stage for this. I'll try to, I think I'll be basing it, oh, a little bit of science there. There we go while flying over something. I think I got low enough and I'm over water. So there is some new science. I did put a tiny sliver of battery in here. This isn't just the straight Aero B uh, V2, by the way, or I wouldn't have had enough battery power. I just put a little sliver of battery. So look, isn't that neat? We went high enough that we caused you know, the sunrise to occur and we came back down such that sunrise, um, right, right back just around sunrise. And I wanna make sure the camera doesn't end up underwater. 
There we go. Good. It didn't. Actually, I'm going to stay here for just a moment because I generally don't get to see that nice uh, water pattern there. There we go. To the space center. So that was a pretty successful mission. I'm not going to get 400 kilometers with this, so I'm going to have to add some kind of upper um, upper stage to the V2 to get even higher. Which, as I explained, you know, a video or two ago, uh, when I constructed the V2, you you totally can because it's so heavy. It's you know compared to the previous sounding rocket I had, there really isn't like a lighter stage I can add on top of that that will you know give my give my payload more range. Uh, recover. There we go. Any new interesting contracts? So sounding rocket. So I currently don't have a sounding rocket low to accept, and I'm not going to get that altitude. So I'm going to go without a contract at the moment. Actually, I'm going to warp to kind of midday. So I clicked to warp to morning, and it's I, know, I would expect morning is right when the sun is on the horizon, but you know, time of day, time of year, or something might cause that not to be true. You know, so I don't want these. So I can actually just decline these because I set the decline break. Crew decline. No, I was just going to keep giving me the same ones because um, I want to be able to decline contracts so that you know hopefully new ones can get bumped in. Because later on in the career you get tons of options for contracts, which is nice. So let's just take a quick uh, poke at trying to design an upper stage for the V2. Um, I might even kind of clumsily uh, take a look at sub uh, sub assemblies, but we'll see. Did I actually? I did have this angle just a little bit. Oh, fair enough. Okay, so I did un unlock some new technology actually, and it looks like I did something wrong. So I'll have to go do something off screen. So each of these new parts, like let's say this guidance unit, it should be grayed out. I shouldn't just be able to select it. I should have to pay um, a cost, and I must have accidentally set the setting for this save wrong. So it's okay. I think I'm pretty sure I set that right in my other save. So I'll be switching over to that to uh, to do that right uh, correctly anyway. So let's see. So. This has the first step. I'll show the first step of making this. There we go. I like. I always use procedural tanks. Okay. So first, I'm going to make a straight cylinder version of that, of that oxygen tank. So let's figure out what is the diameter of this. There we go. Um, is it pressurized? Yeah. I don't need it pressurized. This engine does not require the fuel to be pressurized. Let me double check that. Yeah, it doesn't. Nothing here says pressurized. Okay. Good things. So this contained 4,500 units of liquid oxygen. So let's go in here, liquid oxygen add, update. And so I've got it, 100% of that is filled. So as I make this larger, it's going to still fill it to 100% with that, even as 100% becomes more and more. Um, hmm. Now I'm not sure why I'm not seeing, whoa, whoa I didn't want to do that. Okay, let me quickly grab a tank. This is why I like to prep things a little bit off screen. It just kind of makes the time crisper and means I'd, you know, I'd, I'd rather do a little bit of prep than editing because I don't know how to edit. Okay, hmm, maybe it's just not getting the cross feed or something because when I tapped this, oop, come on, when I tapped that, boom, right away it recognizes that delta V. And here, it's the same thing. Okay, now it's empty. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, maybe it's because I switched. Let's see, liquid oxygen add. So yeah, it's not recognizing that. So I'll have to do a little fiddling. You know, sometimes MechJeb just doesn't recognize. Let's see, if I put it here below this avionics unit, it's still not detecting it. So I don't need it to be pressurized. Uh, but really, I'm just doing the exact same thing as what this has. So I know that's going to be my uh, that's going to be my sea level thrust. So I can put. I can definitely put that other rocket on top of this. So I need to set it up as a um, as a sub assembly because I didn't get any any new engines. So um, actually, did I get? Let's see. I'm pretty sure I didn't get any new variants of this engine, but let's find out. So go to action groups. Click here. No current config. Lack technology. Lack technology. So the best I can do until I get a little more science is. Until I get some new technology, is to make an upper stage that's based on that other tech, which is which is fine. So I don't have any real like I've got these little separation motors and a tiny tim, but I really don't have anything else I can use as an upper stage. Even like a small, um, even a small solid like anything other than the tiny tim, which has a really bad dry mass. Like it's a very heavy 
solid, so even when it's empty it's fairly heavy. So that's the downside of the Tiny Tim. I can't really use it as an upper stage. Um, I can't really try to... <laughs> that looks neat. Um, I can't really just try to throw it on now just to get the calculation either. Uh, but yeah, so this nose cone can be replaced with this liquid oxygen tank. Uh, obviously I can change the texture. I'll probably go do a little bit of fiddling at some point and find some other cool uh, textures because I want to keep this you know, all American. Um, I know there's a couple of other textures I can use. Okay, so I'm going to need a decoupler. And let's see, can I make a... These are the like, kind of the OG, the original stock bases. Um, or I could use... Um, there's all kinds of options I can choose. So I'd like to make it still look streamlined. Um, so I'm probably going to do something to maybe make this tank like cylindrical, or not cylindrical, um, conical. So the top dimension is smaller than the, the bottom dimension. Like not obviously to a tip like that, but some things to make it a bit more, um, a bit more friendly with an Aero B upper stage. But effectively, I'm just going to make a sub-assembly out of that original rocket, and then I'm going to bring it in here. And once I figure that out, I'll kind of show that process, because just trying to you know fiddle it out live just isn't working for me right now. So thanks for watching. You got to see the V2 shoot up out into space and get some new science, and soon I'll be constructing an upper stage to go with my kind of V2 variant uh, first stage. And our first science, uh, first science note is unlocking in the background as we speak. Oh, thanks for watching. I hope to have you come back and watch the next one.